Hi, I'm Nick Ferris from the Georgia Tech Robotic Musicianship Lab, and today we'll be presenting to you our new paper, Musical Prosody Driven Emotion Classification, Interpreting Vocalist Portrayal of Emotion Through Machine Learning. Wouldn't it be cool if robots could listen to a song and tell us what emotion it was feeling? Well, that's what we're developing. In this research, we work on musical prosody, which is a performer's manipulation of music for certain expressive or coordinating functions, and we seek to link, or find the link rather, between musical prosody and emotion. We have three research questions in this paper. First, how well can traditional machine learning algorithms classify emotions when limited to only the input of musical prosody? Next, how well do these modelize generalize to a larger population? And then finally, which features contribute the most to accuracy, and can accuracy be maintained when trained on a reduced subset of their overall feature vector? Let's provide some background to this problem. So how is emotion currently organized? Well, there are two main approaches. First is the categorical, where we put each emotion in its own bucket, such as a bucket for happiness and a bucket for sadness. Or there is the continuous model, which represents emotion as the intersection between the two continuous variables, control and balance. But how is emotion classified currently? Well, current emotion classification models are usually based off metadata filtering and on verbal features. In language, prosody has been found to convey emotion regardless of culture. But what about music? Let's talk about our emotional taxonomy. So for this project, we use two main taxonomies. We use one, which is the categorical or single approach, where we divide emotion up into 20 different buckets. This is much larger than traditional uh, models use. Usually models use 10 or less. And then our second approach is to take these 20 different buckets and to then squeeze them into four buckets as the quadrants of intersection between balance and control. Let's talk about our data collection. So for this project, we hired three professional singers to improvise emotion, and that each singer was tasked with improvising for about 15 minutes per emotion, and then to improvise as many phrases as possible within those 15 minutes. We later on then went up and split up the phrases into phrases in between one second and 20 seconds long, depending on the intent of the artist. Next up, artists were told, no words allowed. In total, this allowed us to have about 15 hours of labeled emotion phrases that are labeled with the ground truth by the actor performing the emotion. Let's listen to two of the clips from our data set and see if you can guess what emotion they are. So what do you think? I'll give you the answer in five, four, three, two. That's sadness. Listen to another one. Hmm, what do you think? I'll give you the answer in three, two, that one's love. After we generated our data set, we had to extract the features. So we extracted features using a Python library called Pi Audio Analysis. In this, you can see our short-term feature list over here, and then you can see how our features were aggregated into the overall feature vector used in training right above. In experiment one, we train and evaluate KNNs, linear SVMs, random forests, extra trees, and gradient boosting machine learning models, and restricted these models to only a single singer's feature vectors. Over here, you can see our confusion matrix for our 20 bucket taxonomy. Notice how along the diagonal, you'll find the correct prediction of the ground truth being predicted by the model. Above me, you can see the accuracies achieved by these models for the single taxonomy and for the big four taxonomy. Notice how the single taxonomy is able to achieve an accuracy of 49% with the SVM, which is 10 times better than random guessing, which would be 5%, and how the big four taxonomy is able to achieve accuracies as high as 67% when determining between the four quadrants of balance and control. In experiment two, we took the architecture from experiment one and expanded it to use three singers as opposed to just a single singer. With this, we expected to see a slight drop in accuracy as we're adding variation to our data. But in spite of this, we saw most models maintain accuracy when expanding to a larger population. These results are very encouraging as some models such as gradient boosting under a big four taxonomy even increase accuracy when adding this variation, thus showing the ability for musical prosody to generalize to a larger population. In experiment three, we analyzed the model performance when training on a reduced subset of our overall feature vector, and we do this using a single emotional taxonomy. 
we implemented added a feature selection such that a single feature is trained, and then the out of all the features, whichever feature has the highest accuracy is added to our permanent feature list. And then this process is repeated until we've used every single feature. In total, this means we had to train approximately 9,316 networks. To do this, we had to abandon the original traditional machine learning algorithms in favor of feed for all neural networks. That way we can use GPU vectorized algebra. As seen in this table, after just the first 25 features, we were able to achieve an F1 score of 45, and after just the first four features, which are aggregations of spectral roll-off in MFCC7, we were able to achieve an F1 score of 20, which is extremely encouraging to developing models based on reduced feature subsets. Our models were the best at classifying fear, joy, and relief, and performed the worst when trying to classify pleasure and admiration. And overall, many emotions demonstrated a pair or another emotion that it was commonly misclassified with, such as hate and disgust, or pleasure and contentment. Following this paper, we have a number of questions for future work. First, can emotional classification models based on musical prosody generalize well to multiple instruments? Next, can deep learning neural networks help us learn what implicit features contribute the most to classification? And then finally, can this dataset be used in GANs to generate audio of a particular emotion? To conclude, we accomplished a number of things in this paper. First, we created a novel dataset with labeled under an expanded taxonomy compared to the prior work. Next, we achieve, or we demonstrate rather, that traditional machine learning models can achieve high accuracies in classification when we're restricted to only the features of musical prosody. Next, we show that these results generalize well to a larger population by including multiple singers. And finally, we demonstrate that these same results can be retrieved when training on a reduced subset of their overall feature vector using approximately 25 of the total 136 features. If you're interested in more details, check out our full paper, link in the description below. Thanks for watching, and happy developing!